Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the NCEC pre-policy course, right, pre-policy writing course at 1300 UTC for 60 minutes. Thank you, uh, Mariam. Uh, this is uh, Jim Trengrove. And I'd like to uh, thank you uh, very much for joining um, this, uh, this webinar. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to talk with you, to listen to you, and to exchange some knowledge and some ideas during this webinar. And um, for those who will be at ICANN 61 in Puerto Rico, I look forward to meeting you and working with you during our scheduled training. Um, some of you I know already uh, from during my time at, at ICANN. Uh, we're together to invest some time and energy into making ourselves better communicators in order to become more successful, particularly as members of the ICANN community and the non-commercial users constituency. Now, NCUC members, and this probably applies to the newer members, you know, are trying to balance professional lives with volunteer work within the ICANN community. Now, some of you might be overwhelmed by the continuous flow of policy development processes that ICANN unveils, and uh, you might be struggling to keep pace. Uh, I know I did during my time there. But hopefully this training and what we do in Puerto Rico will ease your burden somewhat and even make writing public comments fun. So a couple of thoughts uh, as we begin. Um, during the first part of this webinar, uh, I'll be sharing some practical information about public comment writing, some of the best practices I've come across uh, in researching and developing uh, this program. Uh, then we'll look at some examples of public comments I've chosen, break them down a bit to show what I think works and does not work. You may disagree, and, and uh, we'll be able to discuss that. Hopefully, you have the links to the full comments. Um, it didn't work for me to put all of the text onto slides. Uh, but I've pulled some of the highlights from the comments, and, uh, and we'll discuss them. Uh, this exercise will work better when we're face-to-face -face at the training session in Puerto Rico. But uh, this today should give you a flavor of what we're going to do and actually allow you to go into some archived public comments and make your own analysis on substance and style. And of course, we'll be writing in Puerto Rico in groups and as individuals. Now, preparing for this, um, some questions uh, arose, uh, which I don't necessarily have the answers to, but hopefully with your guidance we will be able to come up with some answers by the end of this. Uh, first of all, do you comment on everything? And when do you comment as a constituency and when do you comment as an individual? And if English is not your native language, then how easy is it for you to write in English? Now, some of these questions are contained in the writing survey that I know uh, NCUC sent out over the last two weeks in preparation for this training. Uh, we've gotten some responses. We could uh, use uh, many more. So if you haven't yet responded, uh, I, I hope that uh, you, you please do that. It would really help us. Now, uh, several years ago, one of the longtime members of the NCUC, Kathy Kleinman, said decisions that I can are made by people who show up people who scream most loudly. Well, yes, that is one way to communicate. But actually, I think there are three skills you need to communicate effectively. Speaking, of course, listening, and writing. And I think in order to, su to succeed, no matter what your definition of success, you need to be able to do all three. You need to be able to verbally communicate your ideas. Uh, listen to and comprehend the responses and synthesize that, and then summarize it all in writing. Now, I'm not saying you need to activate all these three skills whenever you discuss an idea in the hallway, outside an ICANN meeting, or at night at the hotel bar or in the lobby, but you always ought to be able to process information in a way so that if the issue were important enough and timely enough, you could organize your thoughts, lay them out in a document, a position paper, or a public comment. So the leadership of the NCUC recognizes that the public comment process as the most effective way for its members to participate in the development of ICANN policy. Uh, in fact, if you've seen the revised operational procedures document from last fall, the NCUC uh, dedicates the first five pages um, on specific steps on how the NCUC should comment. The new specific guidelines to me, however, raise some additional questions for NCUC members, 
uh, among them are how prepared are members to collaborate and how many have collaborated previously and what qualities and skills are required of the pen holder. These questions were behind the idea of the survey and attempt to get a general idea where uh, NCUC members are with their writing skills. So the public comment process to me is developing writing skills develops confidence. Uh, you're able to broaden the pool of available contributors to the community's public comment effort, uh, infusing it with diversity and some new ideas. And the result is an NCUC that speaks with a stronger voice and with increased influence. Now, the proposed training program is designed to prepare NCUC members to effectively collaborate with one another towards the objective of developing a succinct, coherent response to issues raised during a policy development process. Now, if you've spent any time with ICANN, either at one of its annual meetings or online with the working group, you know there are ample opportunities to communicate your ideas, but there are also ample ideas being communicated. So you need to compete for attention. So sharpening your communication skills, and it's your writing skills that we will be focusing on, will give you an advantage. Okay, let's go to the reasons that you write, especially within your constituency. It's an opportunity to build the NCUC status within the ICANN community through thoughtful constituent feedback and make your voice heard. Uh, and it's to share diverse opinions on policy within your constituency as the first steps towards collaboration on a consensus. It's also an opportunity to engage with others outside of ICANN, not only as an NCUC member, but as a member of the ICANN community. Planning your comment. Understand the rules and process of public comment in advance. You want to weigh the content with the length that you think you'll be writing. You want to identify specific areas of concern and address them. And you want to clearly state your reasoning. You want to be able to research support for your claims and be able to present evidence. You want to establish your expertise, either individually or as a constituency, and you want to distinguish your comments from others that um, uh, may be submitted. You want to add examples uh, to support. You want to add examples to support your position when you can. And you want to acknowledge opposing views that have been submitted and explain why I think my position is the best. And then structuring your writing. And we'll go through this a few times um, during this uh, webinar. You want to address your uh, comment to a specific group or individual. You want to state the policy or issue of concern and your position on it. You want to introduce your constituency or yourself and why you or it is uniquely qualified to comment on this issue. And you want to describe how your constitu constituents who you're representing would be affected positively or adversely by the policy or issue. And again, recognize opposing views and offer alternatives. And explain how your position actually improves the policy. And then you want to close your comment with a compelling summary and a call to action. Now, uh, since you've entrusted your time and attention to me, I, I want to give you a little bit more information about me. Um, this photo is, I, I used to introduce myself was taken in Yerevan, Armenia, probably six, seven, eight years ago with a few members of the Internet Society of Armenia with whom I was uh, visited, uh, including the founder of ISOC in Armenia, uh, Igor uh, Mkartumian, um, the father of the Internet in Armenia. And it was so much fun and an honor to have breakfast with these folks um, and fascinated to hear Igor tell some stories, especially one about how uh, John Postel, the father of ICANN, uh, personally handed him the license to administer and manage the new country code for Armenia. Um, I just love being able to get information uh, uh, in the history of ICANN through talking to the people who have been there for a while. I spent 33 years as a broadcast journalist producing news and covering politics um, in Chicago and Washington, D.C. Um, 
I work with some wonderful people. That's uh, uh, journalist Gwen Eiffel, who passed away a little bit more than a year ago. I worked closely with. Um, that's the um, capital where I did a lot of work. I, I worked uh, in the capital for 21 years covering um, the Congress and legislation at a time when they were actually getting things done. Um, and that is me with Bill Clinton. I had the opportunity to um, uh, interview uh, several presidents, and that particular uh, instance was the day the Monica Lewinsky story broke. So there's a, uh, um, an interesting story there, if you can uh, be happy to talk to you about it at some point. During my time there uh, in Chicago and in Washington, I uh, did a lot of different kind of, of writing, uh, and writing for different voices. You, you tend to do that if you're writing for different anchor people, if you're writing for different correspondents. You tend to write in their voice, and it's different if you're writing for a, a, a daily newscast or a, 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 a five- or ten-minute uh, tape piece uh, or a documentary, which I've uh, been able to work on, uh, or writing newspaper articles or writing magazine pieces. Uh, it's all different, and um, it's, uh, the experience has been uh, a good one for me. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I became Senior Director of Communications at ICANN in 2009, uh, between then and 2015. It's actually the last three years I was officially on staff, um, and I worked with Rod Beckstrom and Fadi Shahadi, uh, Peter Dengate Thrush, and Steve Crocker, and with hundreds of wonderful staff um, at ICANN. And among the projects I worked on was creating, promoting, and marketing the uh, new GTLD program. Uh, as well as handling communications for the IANA transition. Uh, I've done a, a great deal of work with ALAC, with the NOMCOM, with SSAC, RSAC, GNSO, the GAC, uh, with all the community groups, in fact. And that's why I've been pretty thrilled to get an invitation to come back and work with uh, NCUC and to see many of you uh, at ICANN 61 in Puerto Rico. Now, I want to get to public comments, and the way I reached them was through ICANN.org. Uh, the website does a good job relaying information about all that is going on. And I say that having been somewhat involved in revisions in the website uh, during my time at ICANN. And I think it has just gotten better. So if you are new to ICANN, you can click through the website for hours, and you begin to piece together a picture of ICANN, its mission, its structure, its operating procedures, its community and the many issues it addresses. Now, if you look at ICANN.org along the top, you'll see uh, a series of tabs, three of them in particular. There's the uh, Get Started uh, tab on the left. And that gives you a beginner's guide to the IANA functions, to participating in ICANN, participating in ALAC. Uh, there's several more um, be beginner guides I know are in the works. Uh, there's also information on the newcomers program. And then under policy, developing policy at ICANN, um, how the DNS works, how ICANN and the supporting organizations work. Uh, there's a link there for the GNSO, uh, how to participate in the GNSO. Uh, this will also take you to how to make a public comment and volunteer for a working group, um, offer some operational policy guidance and general practices on policy. And then public comment. And this is the focus of our training. Now, as the website states, public comment proceedings feature proposals initiated by a working group or department. So again, if you are new to ICANN, especially to the public comment process, then the four options the site offers for your explana uh, exploration really does open up the world of ICANN. So you can click on any one of the four tabs under public comment, and you literally can get lost in, the, in a good way. Uh, reading through comments on dozens of issues that really uh, trace the history of policy making uh, within ICANN. For instance, there's the uh, open comments tab, and you can go in there, and these are the issues that are currently open uh, for your comment. And then there are the recently closed comments, which gives uh, newcomer, uh, newcomers an idea where ICANN's focus has been for the past several months. Upcoming comments, which gives you an idea about potential upcoming public comment proceedings to help you and the, your community set priorities and uh, plan your future workloads. And finally, archive comments, which you can explore at your leisure, tracing 
the road through ICANN's policy development process, uh, all the way back to 2007 and some earlier comments there as well. Now, once you jump into that pool of comments, however, you're going to find very little similarity among them. What I found were vast differences in the thought process, in structure, in clarity, in methods delivery, and in overall effectiveness. Now, I think there's no right way to write a public comment, but I think there are plenty of wrong ways. So there's a couple of points I wanted to start out with here just to keep in mind as you sit down to construct your public comment, and that is to be respectful. You, you want to be in a position of uh, be a, in a gracious, respectful position. You don't want to be partisan. You don't want to be attacking. You want to be direct. You want to make your position clear. You want to be brief. You want to streamline your points, use less words, not more. And you want to be convincing. You want to convince yourself that you are ready to write. Now, um, I've chosen um, four examples. Uh, and this is what we're going to do at ICANN 61 as well. We'll have a few examples we'll dissect. But um, I, I picked four examples here for, uh, to review, to dissect, uh, and to discuss, um, and to look at what works and what we think doesn't work. And that is going to help us when we actually start writing our public comments. Now, one of the comments I chose was the uh, NC, the uh, Non-Commercial Stakeholders Group comments on the draft recommendations of the uh, Cross-Community Working Group on Accountability Workstream 2 on SO and AC accountability. And I saw right away that the introduction is respectful. NCSG welcomes the draft. CCWG accountability uh, workstream two recommendation. Um, these recommendations are an important contribution to strengthening ICANN's overall accountability, and particularly that of the ICANN community. However, if you go right away down to the conclusion, uh, it says the same thing. The uh, non-commercial stakeholder group welcomes the draft recommendations. They're an important contribution to the e evolution of the overall accountability of ICANN and its community. So w what we're going to look at is as the introduction and the conclusions a little later, later on. With the conclusion here, you miss an opportunity to drive home any concerns, any objections you have. Um, I think the conclusion is somewhat soft. Um, and let's look at some of the other language. NCSG also looks forward to further discussion as to whether the recommendations as a whole adequately, adequately address the important issue of preventing capture. Um, let me go to one other here. Despite the 25 recommendations, there remains a broader question that does not seem fully answered. When I first read this, um, and we used this the other day in the first webinar, um, I thought that the overall comment itself came across somewhat almost apologetic in its tone. Um, for instance, on the issue of capture as raised by the, um, um, the NTIA regarding internal capture by a subset of SOAC uh, members, um, do the recommendations in track one fully address this fundamental question? The recommendations appear to partially address the issue. So um, again, here's continue, it would be useful to understand how the recommendations concretely address the issue of capture in more detail. And one more, the NCSG suggests that it might also be useful for there to be a fuller understanding, and I'll, I'll stop there. Um, I went back and we had some discussion about this on the last webinar. I thought it was too soft, not direct enough. Again, I thought it was somewhat apologetic. Uh, I had some people on the call on Wednesday um, challenge me on that, and why is it bad to do? So I went back and I looked at it, and I guess it's not so much the tone of, of the, um, uh, the comments, but also the words that are being used. Um, I think, again, you want to be direct and you want to be brief. And if you envision the people who are reading uh, dozens of comments, maybe hundreds of comments, um, they want to get through it quickly. So one of the things that we're going to talk about um, is, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, is, is how to be brief, how to be direct. Um, again, I think this was um, uh, pretty be I thought this was beautifully written for the most part, and, um, but maybe more language than you really need. 
Let me go to the, another example here. This is on structure, and structure, I think, is very important for a public comment, especially when you're trying to grab the reader's attention quickly. Uh, this is the non-commercial stakeholders group on draft report on public comment on the review of the at-large community by items uh, international. Now, the introduction is where, again, your tone and attitude um, um, uh, will be established, but the structure of the comment, there are 22 numbered paragraphs and there's five sort of heading, headline issues. Um, but if you look at it, there's no relationship really between the numbers and the issues. The, uh, the numbers just seem to be there for reference. So um, it's not really used well as a, as a roadmap. But again, the, uh, the introduction begins graciously. It welcomes the opportunity to comment. But then it immediately goes into four issues in the report which actually the authors agree with. Uh, At-large has been dominated by a few people. Uh, it is too focused on internal committees. Uh, it is not focused on holding ICANN accountable uh, via the board. But then come three more issues, uh, and these are issues of remaining concern. The perceived mission overlap between at-large and the NCSG's constituencies. The random selection rather than merit-based selection uh, is worth trialing. Uh, and we think it's out of scope to recommend that new GTLD auctions be used to fund at-large. So this is all in the introduction. And it's a long list uh, in the introduction. So um, for the introduction, you want to establish who you are why you're here, and what you want. And then you can go into your list of, of, of um, individual issues that you want to address um, and, um, and, and do it that way, and then end with a, a strong conclusion. Um, let me go into this example here. Um, OK, this is the relationship between the NCSG and the at-large community. Um, Proper headlines, um, the third section title, this is the same one, opposition to new GTLD auction proceeds, funds being used to fund the ongoing activities at large. This is further down in the comment. We've already talked about this in the introduction, so we're just continuing it here. And then there's something called fifth section, other observations, which is actually one observation about the structure of the ALAC. So although these issues are valid, the positions are apparent, um, the uh, language, I think, is good. The structure of all these points might lead some re uh, readers to sort of lose their way going through it all. And then finally, the conclusion um, basically is uh, the last paragraph that simply repeats what was said in the first paragraph. It welcomes the opportunity to respond. Uh, again, this is a missed opportunity to summarize your overall concern um, with the policy. And I want to do one more quickly here. This is an individual comment, and I actually enjoyed this one. This is entitled ICANN's IRT Comments from Alan, uh, Alex uh, Gakuru. Um, the introduction is clear, and he uses a bit of humor so we don't forget who he is. My name is Alex Gakuru, chairman of the ICT Consumers Association of Kenya, an irrepressible individual Internet users' rights lobbyist. And then he says, I'm hereby making personal view of the IRT proposal before ICANN. And that's the introduction. Well, can you tell from the introduction what Alex's views of the IRT comments, uh, the IRT proposals are? You don't, because the introduction is short and simple, but it's a little too simple. And here again, a missed opportunity to begin with laying down your, your, your um, you know, the, the reason that you're there, laying down your, the foundation of, of the comments that are going to uh, follow. Now, Alex does succinctly go through uh, several specific issues with the IRT proposal. Free expression, the proposal will cur uh, curtail uh, online expression. Uh, fair use, IRT will further criminalize innovation. Competition, as corporations grow, competition may be stifled. So um, I think you know he's got his uh, Alex has his points, uh, his uh, concerns, and his comments on those issues are brief and direct. And then his conclusion at the end is therefore in view of my above concerns, I pray that I can reject the IRT proposal. Um, 
again, you could, um, I mean, he does get, he, he, there is no call to action. Uh, he doesn't say, let's start over, let's consider other ideas. Um, but he does end um, clearly stating his view. Now, let's get into some points about designing um, and writing an effective public comment. As I said earlier, the first stage is plan your position. Remember, your comment may be one of dozens that will be submitted, so you want yours to stand out. So you will want to understand the policy and the position you are taking for or against it. You want to know your audience and what you hope to achieve. Um, you may have several issues within a policy to which you want to respond. However, if you can, it is best to limit your comment to a specific concern. Of course, if you're writing uh, for the constituency and it's an overview of the policy, you can try to group several issues within a concern and present it in that way. You present your concern in the introduction and then go point by point through the body of your comment. Um, the second stage is research your comment. You want to know the policy and facts surrounding the policy, so you could submit a fact-based comment, one that relies on specifics rather than just general uh, uh, generalities or, uh, or broad analysis. And you want to determine how your position would make the policy better. So you want to do this in advance of sitting down and writing. You want to, sh you want to be able to support your claims. And then the third part is the actual writing. And we can actually do this uh, as a template uh, paragraph by paragraph. So paragraph one, for instance, you want to identify yourself, and you want to state the policy at hand, and you want to specify your opposition or support for the policy. Um, you want to uh, talk about being respectful. You want to recognize the volunteer work. You may uh, be well opposed to some aspects, supportive of others, but you want to be able to explain that broadly in your introduction. And then as you move on, paragraph two, you want to support your objection or your claim with reason and evidence. You want to explain why or, uh, or you explain why you or your constituency is expertly or even uniquely uh, qualified to comment on the issue. And then paragraph three, you want to connect the comment to the people you represent. How will they be affected by the policy? And you want to distinguish your comments from others. And you, you do that because, again, uh, the NCUC has uh, uh, different concerns, uh, different mission than uh, of the other groups. And so you need to stand out and, and, and explain that. You want to offer an alternative solution. You don't want to just complain. You want to come back with something positive. And you want to offer a plan of action on how your solution would work. And you build that up by possibly listing key indicators of success along the way if they employ your solution, uh, and maybe even present a timeline uh, to monitor success. And then finally is your closing comment. You want to be compelling in your summation. Again, you want to express uh, briefly appreciation um, to the policy makers. And you want to urge a call to action around your alternative solution. Um, you know, don't say goodbye in your public comment without asking for something. But try to make it the last thing that you do so you can leave a lasting impression. Um, you know, and I was thinking as I was preparing this and, uh, and did this since, um, I want to come back to here. I, I don't have a slide for this, but I was just thinking that why does all of this matter? Well, it, it doesn't really, if you've got the time and the talent to combine and massage complicated content and opinion and fashioning it into a convincing product that you can sell to the board. Um, but if you are short on time or talent, this template somewhat ensures that you're checking all the boxes you need to to drive home your comment. It helps organize your thoughts, helps organize your ideas, um, and so you can bring that to the table and then start plugging all of that in, and it can help you um, uh, develop a, a streamlined system for getting things done, and it will become second nature to you. You'll just start thinking in that ways of uh, covering all your bases.
Uh, let me give a um, let me go here. This is the final comment, and, and here's a public comment that I believe does click all the boxes, or most of the boxes, for being an effective public comment. This is the IP Justice comment on IRT report. Uh, IP Justice opposes the IRT report proposals. This is Robin Gross who wrote this. Um, so what does it do? Well, right at the top, it identifies the organization and, and uh, who the organization represents. So no questions there. Uh, IP Justice is a nonprofit public benefit organization, promotes balance in intellectual property rights and internet law and policy. And then boom. Then the author immediately states her overall objection to the IRT proposals, opposed to all major proposals contained within the IRT report as being beyond the bounds of trademark law and beyond the scope of ICANN's technical mandate. Um, then it goes on to identify several issues in particular, uh, but again, groups them under that one strong statement in the opening paragraph. So let's go then into the uh, specific points that she lists to back up what she just set up in her introduction. Um, the IRT report proposes to shift the burden and cost of protecting brands over to Internet users and away from private companies who benefit from the privileges of trademark protection. We are concerned about the harmful impact on freedom of expression, particularly criticism in non-commercial speech by the proposed rules. Uh, IP Justice is further opposed to the biased composition of the IRT team and the secretive manner in which it did its work. So um, again, uh, all the points are valid, uh, direct, uh, good choice of words, um, no, uh, no doubt on uh, where the author uh, falls on these issues. Again, the tone of the public comment, though direct and forceful, is respectful. Um, recognizing the efforts of the IRT, despite its hard work and long hours, which we all recognize and appreciate, uh, the IRT team failed its mandate to find a solution acceptable to all. Uh, and then the comment offers solutions, at least uh, some. I can ensure other stakeholders' views can be heard, not only the by providing travel support to non-commercial users and others who have significant concerns with the proposals but no resources to participate. And then finally, a strong conclusion. ICANN must not allow the constant threats from intellectual property lobbyists to prevent the organization from introducing new GTLDs and creating an internet that benefits everyone. And finally, a call to action. Please do not allow their threats to hold up the process any further by continuing with the IRT report in any form. Now, I, I, this is probably an easy one for Robin Gross to write. Uh, she's um, pretty much uh, uh, brings a lot of passion to the issue, uh, and that's important to have if you're going to sit down and write a comment. You have to bring your passion, and the fact that you're with NCUC to begin with means that you're bringing a certain amount of passion, activism uh, to, what, uh, to the issues. Um, you don't want to have your comment look perfunctory. And during my research, I came across a, a quite a few uh, comments throughout the community that came off more as an obligation than uh, an attempt to uh, change things to influence. So um, with that now, I'm going to stop. Uh, thank you uh, for indulging me. Um, we can talk uh, about the theory of public comment writing, and we can dissect the work of others and learn from it, but writing is doing, and that's what we will be doing at the training session at ICANN 61. Uh, whether you're there uh, in person or if you're joining by Adobe Connect, uh, we're going to get you involved. We're going to try to make it as interactive as possible. Um, so either online or in Puerto Rico, uh, I hope to see you there. So thank you so much. And if you have questions, please. Hi, Jim. We have um, Claudio. That was a very interesting presentation. As you said, it might be in the end of the day that we develop our own, own way of making public comments. But for, for the ones who are studying, the structure that you show is really, really helpful in, re in resorting to, to actual comments with their failures and the strong points is really interesting uh, for us. 
I, I have one. I'm boarding. Uh, I'm, I'm less than a year in, in ICANN. Uh, it's going to be my third on-site meeting. I've joined NCUC for about uh, about eight months ago, so I'm really on the starting procedures. Although I have already taken part in some of the efforts, but I, I have a question. I believe you're going to address that also in the seminar. It's not an easy one. I don't expect a simple answer. But from what you showed, it seems that sometimes one has, at, uh, at least individually, not on, on behalf of the constituency, because it's a, I think it's another game, but at least uh, individually, at times you have contributions to make that seem to fit the discussion process within the constituency, but they're not ready yet to become a public comment. Is that feeling, is, is that feeling, uh, does it ring a bell to you? Because it, it seems that you don't have enough to structure a, 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 a meaningful contribution to the whole community as a public comment, it looks like more of a contribution that you could have taken forward within the constituency. And the difference, how to recognize when you'd have enough for a public comment and we don't have enough yet to contribute within the constituency it still strikes me. I don't know if you, if I get what you mean. Well, it, it, it's um, again, we're, we're talking um, in the abstract here, but uh, if there is a point that you're passionate about, if it's a specific point, uh, and if you can go through that checklist of being able to develop um, uh, a comment on it, um, a position on it that you've researched, um, if you have an alternative to offer that you think would work better, if you're able to show how it can work better and how you can judge over a period of months or years on, on how it worked better. Um, if you feel confident of it, then it's worth a public comment. If, if it still needs development, um, uh, you know, talk to some of your, your, um, uh, your fellow members uh, on the constituency, uh, in the constituency and, and, and discuss whether uh, this is an individual comment, whether this is something that could be con uh, included. Uh, in a in a collaborative uh, um, uh, effort, um, I, you know, you you judge, I would say, on issue by issue, um, and uh, I, I, again, I, there's you know, you you just have to make that determination. But because you are part of the NCUC, you're going to get a lot of feedback and get some help on making your decision. Thanks, Jim. Uh, long time no see, and thanks for the the presentation. Uh, really, a lot of. Uh, advices and hints um, really really useful so I think you, you get kind of uh, general uh, public uh, consultation format but um, I think lately in uh, ICANN we are getting uh, more different type of uh, uh, consultation it's not just like uh, outcome of uh, working group report and recommendation but we also have like questionnaire and so on so do you think like the, what you you give as advice is, is still valid, or do we need maybe um, a different format for those? Because, like for questionnaire or survey and so on, they, they there are a list of questions, so it's not like in the same way we we may like develop pos position around recommendations. So, uh, is there any anything specific here or different? Um, I you know I, I think. When when it comes down to it, writing is writing, and offering your positions um, uh, is, is always going to be uh, um, a, a, I don't want to say a labor of love, but it's going, to, it's going to take your passion and your concern. Now, whatever structure that takes or whatever the development process is, you know, that, as you say, that seems to change. But... Um, you know, I, I, I just think that sitting down and collaborating, trying to reach consensus, offering your opinions um, and developing them, uh, developing the content, structuring it, deciding on the tone, being direct, being brief. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't think it really matters what kind of process you're working through. I think using that as your basis to get your points across, I think are always going to be valid points. Not sure that answers your question, but uh, I look forward to you know having a, a further discussion about this um, um, with people who are more familiar with it than I am during the uh, during the uh, uh, seminar in uh, Puerto Rico. 
Hi, Jim. Uh, Renata here. Uh, uh, just uh, um, I have a very simple question. Uh, and sorry for uh, not being in the beginning, but uh, I, there was, was a great, uh, great learning experience, just like our first uh, webinar. And, well, my question is, what if I fail? What if I have a comment which is not uh, ready or I'm not sure or it's rejected by other comments by other members? Um, so what happens there? How do I convince my point or move that comment along? And thank you once more. Um, well, you, you raise a couple of points that are maybe even contradictory. You say, what if I fail? Or what if I'm not sure uh, about my points? You know, those are different. Uh, you're approaching your comment from, uh, you know, why did you fail? Did you fail because you weren't sure? Or did you fail because even though all the research that you did and, and the uh, uh, design of your comments uh, and design of your position uh, you thought was very strong was still rejected uh, by others? So th those, are different, uh, those are different outcomes. Um, we discussed this a little bit last Wednesday um, about when do you comment as an individual and when do you comment within the constituency and when do you back away and let compromise uh, take over. And that's something that you have to do, every individual has to make because yes, you are an individual, you have um, uh, beliefs, um, you have um, uh, motives, you've got um, uh, moral positions that, that you think need to be addressed, uh, defended, uh, pursued, uh, but at the same time you're also part of this constituency and there are other like-minded people with you. Um, maybe not completely like-minded, but you're all there for a reason and I would think and during my, my um, um, a time at ICANN I, I thought that as well is that those who work within the constituency, who build up these, uh, who, who work within the constituency um, and put their individual uh, concerns um, secondary, uh, if you can, um, that works because that's only going to strengthen uh, the NCUC by having people stay within the system. Now, if there's something that you um, uh, completely disagree with that you can't stomach that's within the comment of the constituency that you they've re reached consensus without you um, you feel strongly enough then yes by all means issue a uh, um, uh, an individual comment but uh, again I think for the for the strength of the constituency and for the impact that I think it has it better to come through the constituency than a bunch of voices um, maybe even saying a lot of the same things all individually uh, filing comments. Nick Shorey's up. Um, Nick Shorey for the record. Uh, thanks very much for the presentation. I have two questions. Um, the first one is regarding uh, communications to the ICANN board. If we send a letter to the ICANN board on a particular issue, for instance, um, I understand that the uh, ICANN board, when they convene, are presented with briefing documents which are prepared by um, staffers. Um, is there a particular structure to those briefing documents that might influence the way we would structure a communication to them um, so that you know it can be broken down more effectively or will the board members be provided um, a hard copy or soft copy of the, um, of the original communication that's sent in by the NCSG? The second question is regarding uh, annex documents or links to external resources, which often feature in a lot of our comments. It might be uh, um, a particular data protection regulation or something like that. How should those be incorporated into our communications um, to be uh, um, absorbed most effectively by reviewers? Thank you. OK. Um... You know, I, 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 these are two questions I'll have to research, uh, and I will. I mean, I had uh, I worked pretty closely with the board, um, and I'm not sure. And I know the the, the board's I've you know new members of the board staff. Um, 
I can check with them and get back to you and get back to the um, uh, the group here on how the documents are presented. Um, uh, you know, I always think that it, you know if if you've got a comment and, and or you've got some information that's being presented to the board. I go right up to as many board members as I can and say, hey, keep an eye out for this. I think the one-on-one -on -one interaction with members of the board, if you can do it, is very important. Give them a personal heads up, and then I think they're more receptive to looking at, at the work that comes down. Um, and the same with the ex external links as well, how they should be incorporated and presented, because um, that is important. Uh, I can I can check on that as well, but um, between now and, and, and Puerto Rico, uh, I'll have some answers to that. And um, actually, I'm going to the um, ICANN office in Washington next week, and I'll be able to talk to some of the policy people there as well. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Jim, and uh, look forward to seeing that response. Thank you. Um, Jim, I think there were some Renata here. I think there were some comments or questions on the chat. Um, uh, so there was a conversation oh, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't see these. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Well, let's go through them. Um, is it okay to respond to public comment as part of two different groups or organization, i.e., part one as an employer, as a member, constituent, maybe in a personal capacity? You know, unless you can, uh, and this is from uh, Zakir. I hope I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. Um, Unless you can make that clear um, that you are you are, and, and again this would be in the in, in the introduction of introducing yourself, uh, who you are, who you're representing, and in what capacity. So yes, you you can do that rather than um, sending two different comments. Um, but uh, you know, uh, is everything is everything the same? You're talking about two different groups, organizations, a public comment. Well, does the issue at hand affect each group? the same, or are there different reactions, are there different constituencies, and are they going to be uh, affected differently? Um, that's what um, uh, you need to be concerned about. But if everything else is the same, um, then I, I don't think that there's a problem with saying I'm, I'm coming uh, to you here in, uh, in my organizational capacity, but also in my personal capacity. Oh, for, uh, from Olga, for how long one should silently follow the PDP before commenting himself? Is there any right m moment to start commenting? Is it advised to start with drafting comments as part of a constituency or try as an individual first? Um, Olga, that's a good question. And, and, if, um, and what I don't have here are the, the, the points that are in the operational procedures that came out in September on public comment, I mentioned that there are five pages, and there's a pretty detailed uh, a path to follow uh, for the pen holder in, in, um, in uh, 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 organizing uh, the comments and organizing um, uh, the input, um, uh, you know, at attracting comments, putting them together, and, and uh, several different steps towards achieving consensus. So, um, you know, I, you know, you ask how long should one be silent following to follow i don't think you should ever keep silent at all you should certainly be talking about it all the time um uh you should also always be communicating and get the input of others and that will help you make your decision so i um i'm never one for for urging people keep silent um you may you but you're talking about and and I'm talking about within your constituency you want to be uh, vocal and and even challenging outside the constituency you may want to as they say keep your powder dry a little bit until the constituency uh, you until you have an idea of where the constituency stands on a position and what action they're going to take so I think that I think I've captured all the comments I mean I'm, the questions are very good comments here from members um, that I'm going to hold on to as well and look over but um, I think I oh Rafiq has another question so let's go to Rafiq yeah sorry maybe I should not uh, participate that much but uh, I want to make a comment and also um, have a question so I think uh, Jim you really focused on writing on drafting the comment and this is just one one phase uh, among the whole cycle. 
maybe if you can uh, also give some um, or emphasize how, about reading the, the material in first place to to understand what we, we are commenting on. So I think that uh, the research part and uh, also I think one comment since you, you mentioned about printing procedure is that my, this is my, my own experience. I think what worked well many times is that when we have a pen holder uh, it's that they he or she uh, give like uh, provide a first draft as maybe like throw person in the way that we, we know that maybe it's not perfect it's not um, there are a lot of revision that can be expected but uh, what we see is that it elicit more uh, comments and participation um, from members so is this kind of trying to, to write quickly even just to focus on some idea and then we can rework. So maybe if you have any kind of advice or suggestions on how we can improve on, on around that. So because one, uh, one constraint is the time. The public comment usually is not, uh, it can, it's usually around 40 days. Sometimes it can be extended, but that's kind of the average and that can be really a uh, constraint in terms of participation and when we have, uh, when we, we need to work on the comment for, uh, for a group compared to an individual that he or she doesn't have that, uh, that limit or restriction. Well, um, and, and looking at the, uh, yeah, and looking at the timeline for making public comments, you're right that, that there's a shortage of, of time and you're communicating with, with people around the world in different time zones, so you're not getting instant feedback necessarily. And I, you know, I'm not all that, ex I have to, to admit, I, I'm not all that experienced with the pen holder, uh, and that's why I'm, I'm really looking forward to exploring and discussing that um, uh, in Puerto Rico. But I think it is a good idea to get something out there uh, moving quickly. I mean, you, you want to research, you want to prepare for writing the comment, but you don't want to make sure that everything is perfect before you sit down and write, especially if you think that it's going to be uh, fairly contentious. Um, I mean, if everyone agrees on an issue, I think the pen holder may be able to write something that everybody's going to uh, agree with, uh, or, uh, and there may not be some changes. But, um, you know, it, to get something out there uh, quickly and touching on all the important points, I think you need to have the content that's going to be there, whether you're, the, the language that surrounds it you can massage and work on. But I think before you sit down and write, there needs to be an agreement on, we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about this. Um, and by then you should have input on anything else that people wanted to talk about or, or to leave out. But uh, I agree, it, it, it's good to get something out there and moving and getting people to, to uh, jump in at that point. At, you know, at some point the pen holder just has to, I would imagine, have to take charge um, and, and push this. Um, and giving, you know, you want to give your members an opportunity to respond, um, but you've also got an obligation uh, uh, to the group uh, to, get this, um, to get this presented in time. Uh, Renata, you have your hand. Yeah, I was just uh, seeing some of the questions uh, here on the chat, and uh, I'm I'm also curious about a Shruti um, question. Uh, will a specific research done in personal capacity uh, contribute to this process? And I would add, so researching for doing comments. Uh, so where do we start? Uh, what do we do? What are the priorities here? Thank you. Okay, uh, let me let me um, see if I can understand. You're talking about the priorities as far as the research goes. Um, I think preparing yourself to contribute to the comment. So should we go for the draft uh, report? Uh, only should we go uh, look for the working group uh, action or timeline? Uh, what would you recommend? Well, I would recommend, um, I, I don't, I, I, again, um, this gets back to what I had asked earlier about um, do you comment on everything 
and do you look at your uh, uh, if you um, are you looking at your role in this to be perfunctory? Are you just doing this through an obligation? Uh, you want to bring to the table to the um, you want to bring to the discussion again your passion and your knowledge of the issue. Um, so, uh, you know, whether you're using the working group work or whether you're doing individual research, um, if you've come up um, with uh, an angle or a point that hasn't been um, looked at earlier, uh, remember that back to the presentation I mentioned several times about distinguishing your comment from others um, and establishing why you or your uh, group uh, is uniquely is, is an expert is uh, has the expertise and maybe even uniquely qualified to comment. So I would bring everything you can that is new, unique, um, as long as you've got the facts to base it up. Um, uh, I, yeah. So I, I I'm not sure that answers the question, but um, I think new, different ideas and that you can try to sell to others. I, I, and that, that can be a challenge, but um, that is done certainly much before you, uh, you, you actually sit down and start writing a comment. Just collect your research, have your facts, uh, and uh, be armed with them uh, to support your position. Thanks, Jim. I realize we, we passed even a few minutes uh, of the hour already. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone, for participating. I would just uh, note one last question, Jim, and, uh, and, um, and thank everyone and, and wrap up. Uh, you can wrap up our webinar. It's a statutory question. I am a newcomer, and I do not really belong to any organization. Individual public comments uh, can be done. Is it mandatory to be in an organization so to do a comment? Uh, thanks. That would be uh, the last one. Well, um, it is not, of course, it's not mandatory. Um, but um, you are, if, if by working through the organization, for instance, if there's an issue and the board gets um, 15 different public comments on an issue that are all basically the same. Um, that's fine. But if, the, you know, is that better than having one strong uh, organizational uh, response that is well-crafted, well-researched, uh, well-supported with solutions, uh, it's direct? Um, I think in having a strong comment like that from the NCUC rather than individuals, is is much more impactful. Now, the um, the, the caveat to that, of course, is um, if you're trying to get something within the constituency uh, consensus report, uh, and you're not having any success, and you feel strongly about it, then you can um, uh, mention something, uh, uh, do it as an individual. But if it's unique, and if it hasn't, if it's a new comment, or if it's, it's distinguished from from others, um, you know, you ought to be able to. You know, I, I think with a little influence, you should be able to sell that within the constituency and say, "Hey, have you thought about this?" So uh, again, I like working within the constituency, but if there's, um, if you're not having much success there, and you're uh, adamant about your position, then by all means, I would go with a uh, an individual comment. Uh, well, everyone, uh, we reached the top of the hour. Uh, this was, again, uh, very, very uh, educational and uh, certainly gives us a lot of food for thought for our walk in, uh, in policy making. I'd like to thank Jim uh, once more, and uh, we can adjourn, the, uh, we can finish the call. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to staying in touch. And feel free to uh, send me more questions uh, offline here. Um, and uh, again, I hope to see some of you in Puerto Rico.